Violent protests in the Dutch city of Rotterdam over COVID restrictions because of soaring infection rates. Police shoot at the crowd as protesters hurl fireworks and rocks. The city's mayor said it was an orgy of violence. And today, thousands of people in Austria attend protests against mandatory vaccinations and lockdown. It comes amid a warning from the World Health Organization that hundreds of thousands more people could die of COVID without urgent action, also tonight. Divisions in the US after the verdict which cleared a teenager of murder for shooting dead two people during protests. And a last minute penalty kick secures a dramatic victory for England against world champion South Africa. Good evening. The mayor of Rotterdam in the Netherlands has condemned what he's called an orgy of violence after protesters took to the streets to demonstrate against coronavirus restrictions. The country is one of a number in Europe to reimpose a lockdown because of a surge in cases. And there are reports tonight of further unrest in The Hague with hundreds of people in clashes with the police. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people took to the streets in Vienna after the Austrian government said it was putting in place a full national lockdown from Monday. Our Europe correspondent Anna Holligan reports. Rotterdam, the Netherlands' second city, scarred by a night of rage. Riot police came from across the country to try to quell the uprising. They fired warning shots, then live rounds in response to scenes condemned by Rotterdam's mayor as an orgy of violence. On several occasions, police officers had to draw their weapons to defend themselves. Some aimed shots were fired. At least seven were injured. Restrictions in the Netherlands began last Saturday and will be in place for another two weeks at least. Tonight, they're being extra vigilant here, checking IDs, and still looking for suspects. The streets here are peaceful right now, but pockets of discontent exist across the country and the atmosphere remains volatile. The Netherlands is among several European countries battling record infection rates and many governments are considering or implementing tougher measures targeting the unvaccinated. In Austria today, supporters of the far-right Freedom Party marched against mandatory coronavirus vaccines. A 20-day lockdown will start next week. Working from home will be ordered and only essential shops will stay open. Germany fears a national healthcare emergency. New measures are expected for those who haven't had their jabs. A full lockdown is still on the cards. The UK isn't yet seeing such a dramatic surge in cases. And these are some of the reasons why. Many countries in Europe were faced with Delta a little bit later, so they're dealing with it now. And some of them opened up slightly later than we did, so that's a factor. The second point is there's differences in vaccines. You've got high levels of non-vaccine uptake in some populations in some European countries. 
high infection rates have helped to build up immunity in the UK. Now the push to encourage people to get their booster jabs continues. The incentive for many, the avoidance of harsher rules like those enforced elsewhere. Anna Holligan, BBC News. The World Health Organization has called for an urgent tightening of measures across Europe to try to halt the spread of COVID. Well, our correspondent John Donison is here with me. And John, they've got some alarming predictions if action isn't taken. They have. This is Dr Hans Kluger. He's the WHO's regional director for Europe. And he's warning there could be a further half a million COVID-related deaths by next March if urgent action isn't taken. He's urging uh, the wider wearing of masks and obviously for people uh, to get vaccinated. Now, this comes, as we heard in Anna's report there, with several European countries reporting record case levels. The situation in the UK is a bit different. The latest figures from the Office for National T Statistics show that case levels here are continuing to fall. Now, that could be because they've been pretty high for several months, and that means that a certain level of natural immunity has built up. There is concern, though, about vaccine efficiency waning. The government really pushing uh, booster jabs now. From Monday, 40 to 49-year-olds will be the latest group of people who can get uh, go online and book their COVID booster jabs. OK, John, many thanks. John Donison there. Well, let's look at the situation in the UK in more detail with the latest government coronavirus figures. They show that there were 40,941 new infections recorded in the latest 24-hour period. On average, 40,531 new cases were reported per day in the last week. 150 deaths were recorded. That's of people who died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. On average, in the past week, 147 related deaths were recorded every day. And on vaccinations, more than 14.6 million people have now had their booster injection. There have been calls for calm in the United States after yesterday's court verdict that cleared a teenager of murder. 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse had argued that he was acting in self-defence when he shot dead two men and injured a third during unrest last year over the police shooting of a black man. The non-guilty verdict has divided the country, as our North America correspondent Nomia Iqbal now reports. Hundreds of people marched through New York in protest at the verdict. In the city of Portland, a riot broke out after protesters smashed windows and threw rocks at police, but nothing on the scale of last year's unrest. I'm, I'm alive, but what could have happened? After the verdict came out, Kyle Rittenhouse spoke to one of America's most conservative talk show hosts, Tucker Carlson. The jury reached the correct verdict. Self-defense is not illegal. I believe they came to the correct verdict and I'm glad that everything went well. And it's been a rough journey, but we made it through it. We made it through the hard part. The case goes beyond what happened in this courthouse in Kenosha. For most Republican politicians, Kyle Rittenhouse is a brave patriot who was simply defending himself that night after being chased. But many Democrats are worried that by not being held accountable for killing two men and injuring a third, it sends a dangerous message. Hey the vice president said the decision reflected poorly on the justice system. The verdict really speaks for itself. As many of you know, I've spent a majority of my career working to make the criminal justice system more equitable, and clearly there's a lot more work to do. President Biden said he understood the anger and concern by some, but struck a more measured tone. I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. This case has exposed so many divisions that already exist in America about gun laws, racism and left versus right. The story of this teenager will do almost nothing to bring those sides together. Nomi Rickbell, BBC News, Kenosha. The number of people who died in England while detained under the Mental Health Act rose during the pandemic, according to early figures from the watchdog the Care Quality Commission. It comes amid concerns that staffing shortages are compromising patient safety. One of those who took his own life after being sectioned was teenager Charlie Millers, who died at the end of last year. Patrick Baker spoke to his mother, and a warning, his report contains flashing images. After struggling with his mental health throughout most of his teenage years, 
17-year-old Charlie Millers became increasingly unwell during the second half of 2020. He uh, went downhill in the July time. Um, he was uh, then sectioned. Charlie spent the next few months in and out of the mental health unit at Prestwich Hospital in Manchester. In early December last year, he returned to the ward following a night at home. Dropped him off at quarter to eight at night. He was in really good spirits. And then um, I got a phone call at quarter to 11 to say that they were doing CPR on him. During the course of that evening, Charlie had made four attempts on his life, the last of which proved fatal. A confidential NHS report into Charlie's death said that due to sickness absence being reported that day, there was no qualified nurse rostered on duty for the night shift. The nurse in charge agreed to cover this shift. She had worked from 9am to 4pm and returned at 7pm. In a statement, the NHS Trust that runs Prestwich Hospital expressed its deepest sympathies, but said it would be inappropriate to comment further until the coroner's inquest has concluded. Between 2012 and 2019, an average of 273 people died each year while detained in hospital or being supervised in the community under the Mental Health Act in England. But early estimates for the first year of the pandemic suggest a record high, with 490 people dying between March 2020 and March 2021. I think staff shortages are compromising patient safety in every part of the NHS at the moment. We have a workforce crisis um, and it's time we completely overhauled the way we decide how many doctors and nurses we're going to train for the future. The Department of Health and Social Care said there are now record numbers of doctors and nurses working in the NHS. They said they're investing £2.3 billion a year by 2023-24 to transform mental health care and will bring forward plans to reform the Mental Health Act. Charlie's mum, Samantha, says she's still waiting for a clear explanation about how her son could have lost his life in the very place that was meant to keep him safe. A full inquest into Charlie's death starts next year. Patrick Baker, BBC News. Let's take a look now at some of today's other news. A major rescue operation has been taking place in southeastern India where flash floods triggered by heavy rains have killed at least 30 people. In one incident, three buses were washed away. Analysts say unpredictable and extreme weather across South Asia is driven by climate change and exacerbated by damming and deforestation along with excessive development. The founder of Tesla, Elon Musk, has apologised after hundreds of drivers were locked out of their electric vehicles because of a fault affecting their phone app. Customers affected were those not carrying their key cards, which is another method of opening the cars. And welcome to a highway in California where a modern-day gold rush of sorts has delighted drivers. An armoured car had a minor accident near San Diego, spewing cash across the lanes. The authorities are appealing to those who picked up the money to hand it back. With all the sport now, here's Carthy Nyanasigaram at the BBC Sports Centre. Carthy. Rita, thank you very much. There have been some thrilling rugby union matches as the Autumn Nation Series comes to a close this weekend. England had a 27 points to 26 win over South Africa, who had beaten them in the World Cup final two years ago. Wales also won by a single point, overcoming Australia 29 to 28. And Scotland defeated Japan 29 points to 20. Patrick Geary has the details. On another continent, on the other side of a pandemic, England and South Africa met in the World Cup final. South Africa won, England failed to score a try. So what a start they got from Manu Tuilangi after just six minutes. Against the Springboks, you hope your points outnumber your bruises. It's a test of strength. Freddie Stewart muscled England 11 points clear. But you're never safe from Andre Pollard's boot. He helped make up the distance. Kick for kick, Sweet South Africa crept the back. They were just ahead when England saw an escape route. Joe Marchant to 20-year-old Rafi Quirk to score his first international try. The moment of his life! He'll never forget that, but South Africa soon did. With English ranks elsewhere, Makazoli Mapimpi had the space he needed. Not long later, South Africa led, but only by two points. An advantage vulnerable to an English surge, an English penalty. There it was. Less than a minute left and Marcus Smith, England's great hope, had England's big kick. England finished 2021 by beating the world number one.
When Wales scored their first try of the match against Australia through Ryan Elias, it seemed they were on course for a fairly comfortable victory. The Wallabies had already lost a man to a red card at that point, but were determined to make it interesting. Not long after Filippo Dalgunu's try, they actually went ahead. But as in London, so in Cardiff. This time, Rhys Priestland's penalty would be the final action of Wales's year. They finish on a high. Scotland's performance in beating Japan was a little patchy, but to Hogg the limelight. That took Stuart Hogg clear as his nation's top try scorer, a record that will surely only be extended. Patrick Geary, BBC News. It has been a dramatic day in the Premier League too, but it is time to pop out of the room if you don't want to know the day's football results as match of the day. And in Scotland, sports scene follows soon on BBC One. There's growing expectation that Manchester United will sack their manager, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, following today's 4-1 defeat at Watford. United have dropped to seventh place in the table and have had just one win in their last seven league games. Top of the table, Chelsea had a 3-0 victory over Leicester City. There were wins for new managers, Steven Gerrard and Dean Smith at Aston Villa and Norwich. And Liverpool are in second place after a 4-0 win over Arsenal. Celtic are into next month's Scottish League Cup final after defeating Holder St Johnston 1-0. While in the Scottish Premiership, there were wins for Dundee United and Motherwell. St Mirren and Livingston drew one all. Lewis Hamilton will be on pole position for tomorrow's Qatar Grand Prix after an impressive final lap in qualifying. The Mercedes driver was nearly half a second faster than title rival Max Verstappen, who was 14 points ahead of Hamilton with just three races remaining. Rory McIlroy is back at the top of the leaderboard at golf's season-ending tournament at the European Tour, the DP World Tour Championship. McElroy regained the lead after a third round of 67, putting one shot ahead of England's Sam Horsfield. If he wins, McElroy would become the first golfer to win the prestigious Dubai event three times. Tennis and Joe Salisbury has become the first British man in history to reach the doubles final of the end of season ATP finals. Salisbury and his partner Raju Ram are the reigning US Open champions. They beat the world number one pair in a match tiebreak in their Turin semi-final. That's all from the BBC Sports Centre for now, Rita. Thanks very much, Carthy. Well, that's it for now. But before we go, the Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, will join Andrew on BBC One. But that's all from me. Good night. <laughs>